Akin Corker, sports agent at the Athletic Network. Represent football, rugby, and NFL players across the globe. Uh, 28 years old, so still fresh to it, still fresh in the game, but um, doing my thing. We, I feel as though, even though we're only three years deep, we've been doing it a long time. So that's what I do. Um, working with the NFL athletes crazy. Working in the US is it's completely different market, something different. But I enjoy it, and I'm enjoying it. Um, we had a busy summer, World Cup this summer. Summer transfer window is crazy. Um, we managed to get a few big deals over the line. And, uh, looking forward to January and, and, and beyond. Making the transition from a semi-pro rugby player to a sports agent was difficult for me. Um, that's all I wanted to do from early on was play professional sport, whether it was football, rugby, um, I wanted to be that guy that people looked at and I loved everything about it, the boots, the kit, um, the, the time you spend with your teammates. Um, but making that transition after I got injured was for me a blessing in disguise because it meant that instead of being a player, I was representing the guys and I knew exactly what they wanted because I'd been one, um, which as an agent is 80% of the battle, is understanding your player, knowing what he or she wants, when they want it and why as well. Um, so for me, even though it was tough at the beginning, as I made the transition and got a little bit more comfortable, it was fine and you know, now I'm in the thick of it and I can't even remember what it was like to be a player. I'm happy I'm not getting cold and muddy anymore. Um, I, I, can keep the, uh, <laughs> I can keep the Gucci's fresh, um, keep the haircut fresh and just do my thing. So the biggest thing that sets me apart from other agents is the game is my attention to detail. Um, I'm up against agents that have been in the game 15, 20 years. So for me, my agency being young, we have to do more in a smaller space of time than guys who are already far more established than me. And the only way I can do that is by attention to detail, which is looking at the market, understanding, trying to forecast trends. So not sit back and wait for things to happen, but have a look at what's going to happen at the end of this season. Where should we be at? Um, what are players wanting from their agents? The big things, you know. Um, it's not just about boots anymore and getting your players a big deal. Anyone can do that. Now it's about what do you add to their lives off of the pitch as well. The marketing aspect has become huge, so we place a huge amount of emphasis on sponsorships and making sure that we're partnering our players with the best brands on the globe, full stop. Um, so if you're talking about what separates me, it's just that hunger and desire to forecast trends and not be reacting to what's already happening. I want to be that guy setting the pace um, and having people look at me as a trendsetter. So I mean, social media transformed the role of agents massively. Um, 10 years ago, you didn't really know too much about who the agents were unless you were in the business. Right? So you wouldn't know about Amino Raiola or Jorge Mendes unless you were in football. And in football, in the back office, not just a, a fan of the team. Now it's completely different because when guys sign, who have they got next to them? Their agent. You know, when something doesn't go right and you see quotes from the newspapers about a, an agent trying to move his player, it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's on Snapchat in a, in a heartbeat. Um, so it's made us a lot more vocal. It's given us power as agents to have leverage in terms of having personalities and profiles of our own, which is something I pride myself on. Um, but at the same time, it's been not a negative, but it's difficult because people now look at agents as, you know, you've seen shows like Ballers, for example, which kind of glamorizes the lives that we live and people expect it to be that 24 seven when it's not. There's a lot of late nights. There's a lot of in the office, um, leaving at 1 a.m. I haven't been on a yacht party yet, so I'm missing out, I'm doing something wrong. Um, but yeah, it's a blessing and a curse, social media for me. I try and give people an insight to something different. Um, like I said, young, agent, from London, inner city London, with my own business, my own agency, that's a massive point of difference that I know other agents in a room don't have. Um, and that's what I try and bring to the table. When I'm looking to sign a player, whether it be football, rugby, the NFL, maybe other sports, personality is the biggest thing for me. Personality and attitude. Um, every player can play. 
everyone's got technical ability, anyone can get quick and fast and strong. But as an agent, does my player have something outside of that that I can use to help elevate him or her? That's really the most important thing for me. It's, you know, something that's been lost across a lot of agents because we make so much money, or you can make so much money off of one deal, that sometimes the focus is on getting a player who can simply play so that you can get a big deal, get a good chunk of commission and do your thing. But for me, I'd rather go the other way. I'd rather get 10 players who are up and coming, but who have unbelievable personalities, who are personable, engage with fans, dress well, have interests outside of their sports, then have one player who's amazing on the pitch, but doesn't do anything off of it. Um, because down, down the road, that's not gonna do anyone any favors. It's great, listen, don't get me wrong, talent on the pitch is the, the, the foundation, and you have to have that before anything else. But if that's the only string to your bow, you're gonna get lost in the source these days because you've got athletes across the board bringing out perfumes, opening hotels, um, you know, having collaborations outside of sport that we haven't seen before, being mentioned in songs and so on and so forth. So now it's about, right, making sure you've got as many strings to your bow as possible. Um, so for me, that's what I look for in my players, just making sure that you, you're versatile and dynamic and um, you have a bit about you because then I've got something to work with. So my relationship with Baller um, started through the influencer side. Um, obviously the brand has grown massively over the past few years um, and especially now heading into what's going to be a kind of a new wave, the next generation of athlete who's really focused about their clothing, about the aesthetic. Baller's right at the forefront of all of that. So for me it made sense to touch base with, with you guys, find out how, where's the synergy? What can we do together? The athletes that I represent are some of the best in the world in terms of, like I said, not just their on-pitch ability, but also what they do off the field. Um, and Ball is all about that, you know, aligning with high quality talent in terms of what they do and their day-to-day -day job as a footballer or whatever it might be, but also having a bit about you off of the pitch. So yeah, it made sense. The collaboration has been great so far. We've done some really cool things. Um, I'm going to be out in Ibiza soon, so you're going to see me on the yacht doing my thing. Beard will be glistening, but um, no, it's been great so far. So my favourite sneaker right now, um, and it's a bit cliched because everyone's into the NBA, everyone talks about MJ, but I got sent a care package not too long ago by a good friend of mine who works at Jordan headquarters, and she sent me some 11 lows, Derek Jeter, suede, um, bad boys that I've worn once, maybe twice. I don't think I'll wear them more than that. But um, US release only, so I know I'm not going to see anyone rocking them here in Europe, or certainly not in London, but they're crazy, man. They're, um, I mean, comfort-wise, they're up there, and obviously MJ symbolises so much more than just a pair of shoes. Was he the best, or is he the best? I don't know. I think LeBron probably takes that mantle, but he's the most iconic without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and so to have his shoes on your feet, and to have those limited edition Derek Jeter's, yeah, it means a lot to me, man. So my favourite baller item um, is for sure the backpack. You know, for me, not just even heading into meetings and my work life, but in outside of that socialising, it looks so sleek, it looks smooth. The way the sunlight hits, it's crazy. The panelling, all of that. Um, you guys have sent me a few of them as well. I've got a few in the house, so, you know, I've got one to rock, one to stock. Uh, but that's for sure my favourite. Big, roomy as well. Wipe my laptop in there, a couple chargers, some headphones, and I'm good to go. So that's my favourite item for sure. What's happening, guys? Akin at the Athletic Network here. Appreciate you watching Baller IGTV. Catch you on the flip side.